Hello, I'm Mark Childhouse, and because things on the internet seem to lose their date references pretty quick, today is Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. And as said in some of the other recent videos, uh, because of Southern California's weird weather, uh, January and February, as of today, we are at uh, 6.17 inches of rain for the month of February and we're over 10 inches now for January and February and we have an annual average, uh, long-term average uh, of 9 to 11 inches on our property so we're, we're pretty wet. Uh, we've been going through our craft hobby room opening boxes that haven't been open for a long time. Uh, this set was uh, probably bought in the early 1980s and uh, when we moved from Virginia in 87 to San Diego. Uh, my Navy career almost immediately took me to sea and uh, I was gone for quite a while and uh, chances are with our girls being involved with other stuff uh, it didn't come out of the boxes until the other day. Found some really useful uh, resources to forum uh, for US-1 electric trucking it has been really helpful and uh, in getting it on one of the things I found um, it, when we set this up, and it's on another video, the uh, operating log loading bulldozer. Like, it's really cool. I, I like it. But it has some issues, and uh, Mike Turvey uh, created a auto retract system for it, which is really cool, and a, a nice way to do it. And, uh, and then uh, Mike Biddle uh, created a video on how to put it in. So without those two resources, I would not have attempted to do this uh, modification. Uh, the other thing is that I want to address is if you're a purist to this, and this is the uh, this is the box. It's a thirty. It's the number thirty four fifteen. Uh, if you're a purist to this, uh, you won't. Uh, want to drill any holes or whatever and this modification to this requires no hole drilling no no nothing that can be done nothing that can't can't be undone so if you don't like this once you put it in you can take it out and it's exactly back to original order with a little bit of um, a, adjustment I printed the uh, 3d printing for this out on my uh, 3d printer I used ABS ABS uh, holds its shape a little better than PLA and uh, I used ABS and uh, I had some issues uh, in, in installing it which is why I made this video so I highly recommend that if you want this modification to your operating log loading bulldozer uh, accessory for US-1 electric trucking uh, that you watch uh, Mike Biddle's video and then uh, and finish mine uh, before you start and then you should be well geared to uh, easy success with this thanks I uh, hope you enjoyed it hope this helps you out with your with your set we have we're enjoying this and uh, hope you enjoy it and hope you had fun with it thanks for watching this is Mike Turvey's um, <coughs> printing file 3d printing file and it's printed out on my uh, Parissa i3 Mark III S uh, printer. It took about an hour and 15 minutes. And the only thing that I would uh, do to this, besides stripping all the uh, supports and uh, and whatever else off of it, is I think I would drill uh, a notch, uh, a, a recess in that button in the center of the big wheel. Uh, about five sixteenths in diameter, about one eighth inch, to give me a little bit of room uh, where the screw goes in on the uh, on the operating log rolling bulldozer uh, itself, and you'll see that silver screw inside the yellow wheel. The 3D printing is now off on my little work area, and my little work area allows me to implant things uh, using corrugated cardboard so that they uh, stay. Uh, you've got to strip this off, and there's a, because I'm using uh, ABS and the resolution of my printer, I've got to do a little bit of filing to make these things smooth 
and that showed up as uh, assembly came into play. So I have an advantage in doing this modification in the fact that I watched the online video and um, learned a lot from it and then I printed it out on my 3D printer and I ran into problems and started chasing them down. So this is where we're going to start and the first problem is to get the tractor off of the um, accessory and it takes a, a quite a bit of force and then it comes off I've already detached it but it's just sitting back in place where it belongs so uh, you can I can pull it off and I can put it off on the side uh, at this point we've got to flip it over and take uh, the three screws out of the bottom and I've already done that sorry about that but I'm gonna pass on lessons learned and let me reset the three screws uh, that are in the bottom I highly recommend you use a number two Phillips to get them out I initially tried with the largest of my eyeglass screws and partially stripped the head out of one of them they were in very tough and very tight and uh, recommend you break uh, each one loose and before you uh, remove all of it and that's a piece of debris uh, so the three screws are now out. Don't take it apart quite yet uh, because the entire system is designed to be sitting upright, correct, before you remove it. As you, my recommendation is you keep uh, the, the uh, accessory up and work underneath it. There are four pins when you do start to work them out. They have to come out kind of even, and once they do, they fall away, and you can set the cover off on the side. Now, before you go away from this, take a look at how this works. So the truck comes back up here, its wheels are rotating like this, and counterclockwise. So this is going to spin in this manner, so you can save yourself a whole lot of time uh, later on by spinning it with this big gear when you're going to test it because you're going to test it later on and one of the other comments is if you're worried about being a purist you're going to be able to return uh, this back to its original condition without any damage without any change to any of the original parts the only thing you're going to change remove is this this arm here and you're going to replace him so you can keep him around and then uh, if you ever want to revert to put him back to condition you can okay so I printed it on my 3d printer and um, I, I put it together I used a long peg to go in here I had to shape it out a little bit and I used a long peg to go in here and this one as you said is is uh, not quite round uh, to index to pin don't know why that's important but somebody thought it was and uh, then I smoothed off all the edges with a file so that it wouldn't bind on anything on this one here I know it's going to bind uh, because it's higher than this so I marked it with a hobby knife as to how high it was and then I took a hobby saw a very fine tooth hobby saw and uh, cut it off now something that's not covered in the video and this is where I'm running into problems this here fits into this and it keeps it indexed so when you put it on the peg when you put the peg through the hole that goes into the center and keeps this from moving around mine's moving around quite a bit I don't care for that and it's also fairly high so what I'm gonna do is I'm momentarily gonna stop the video and I am gonna take double-sided tape and put it between these two parts and cut a hole for the center I'm gonna put the double-sided tape here cut a hole for the center then center this and see if that locks it in place 
we'll get on back to the video in a minute okay I've got the double sided tape down here and I cut the center out I cut an area around the pin uh, to go through the hole and uh, we're just going to test fit it to make sure it comes down feels good and you need this is this has got to stay geometrically balanced on that wheel that spins around and the problem I was having was uh, that indexing hole was in the center was coming out so we're going to try and cure it this way and I work with double sided tape on several of my other hobbies trying to get it peeled off is occasionally fun I'm going to take that off make it kind of neat the hobby knife where I can stab myself later on Put the peg through the hole. Center it as best I can and then contact. And now we're going to see if this maintains contact. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this guy here and put him in place. And he should stay there. And then we can turn the big one. Okay. And because of the geometry of the circle, you get a fair amount of... Uh, rotation before he starts moving again but he looks like he's staying so if if he's staying I'm going to set him put him back together not put the screws in him put him back together and see how he see if he still works and the wheels the uh, traction points need to rotate towards the front so I've got uh, the tractor axle grabber, I guess that's what I'm going to call it, uh, somewhat in place. And as you index this, this lip here is going to come really close to here. And then this edge is going to remain parallel to here. And that will index those pins, the alignment pins underneath it, the ones that are so much fun to deal with. and don't set them down too far look inside I just happened to hit it look inside and if you need to align the axle grabber you can take a razor knife a very small screwdriver and move it left or right or you can I'm gonna slide this off to me you might be able to reach underneath and uh, move it left or right before you push it up so right now Everything is back together in contact, but not screwed down. And I'm going to turn these guys to make sure that he works like he's supposed to work. Isn't this a thrilling part of the video? Now he's starting to move again, and that's, that delay is because of the arc of the circle in relation to that pin. It's geometric. There's very little movement for about uh, 20 to 30 degrees of that big wheel. And these little wheels are not turning that big wheel real fast. We know it went back to that position. Now it's coming up. I want to make sure it comes all the way up to the top and starts back down before I put the screws in it.
we have very little movement because we're in that uh, 15 to 30 degree arc that geometry and pegs just not going to move it very much so it should start reversing batteries are going out okay <laughs> my wife is doing my photography right here let me see what happens here so it's still connected I'm going to stay with this and, and see what we get here okay time to troubleshoot I'm, stay with me photographer, I'm going to take the shell off, that's a little bit of coordination because you need to pull the four down all at the same time, pull the four pins out all at the same time and see what happened. As it comes towards the center it gets bigger because it's an angular issue. And part of the problem is my double-sided tape has come off. Has it? See if we can put this guy back together. So, how do we keep? We need to keep that pin in place. And the best way to do that, unfortunately, is use the laws of levers. Bring them up here. Okay, let's try it. Okay, um, I've got to sand this so that it, so that this slides a little better. Okay, we'll stop the video. Okay, off camera, um, I reset this and. Uh, using the laws of lever levers uh, brought the pin the rotating pin uh, 180 degrees away from or totally opposing the pivoting pin and then uh, set the axle grabber on it and drop this in using the index over here and this parallel front and got it on the right time i've run it through once already and I will tell you that as I roll through this manually, I'm going to delete some of this in the video because it's kind of like watching grass grow in the middle of the desert or paint dry on a humid day. But it does work as advertised and I'm doing it by hand and it just takes a long time. As it comes to the end, because of that angular motion of on the pin, in relation to the uh, pin on the wheel and the pin pivot pin, you don't get a whole lot of movement for 15 to 20, 30 degrees of rotation, and that's a lot of turns on this little wheel. 
which is why it just stays stationary for so long. There it goes. <coughs> and as it gets towards the away from the 90 degree off the pivot pin, movement's much faster per degree of rotation. Start slowing down again. And maybe because of the time, I'll bore you by leaving this in at real time. Because right now we're in that lot of angular mo motion for very little displacement of that pin on the wheel. But there it comes up. And it's starting to move ever so slowly. So it is tested to be functional. Now it's time to put it back together. Okay. Now, as I said, I recommend a number two Phillips screwdriver. Make sure the point is sharp. Slide it off your working table, keep it closed, flip it over, just get it started, don't screw it in very far. commenting. Uh, it says uh, made in Hong Kong. Tyco made in Hong Kong. I've been to Hong Kong numerous times. It was one of my favorite Navy Liberty ports. Very interesting British colony at the time. Now it just snug these guys down. need to be real tight. They are in the plastic. And this guy here, I wonder if he could be stored in here somehow. I wonder if he could be stored in here somehow. So you don't lose them. Or lay them, put them off in your parts box. Okay, and now I'm going to hook them up to the uh, set and oops, I've got to put the bulldozer guy on them. For the bulldozer guy, highly recommend you slide them all the way back. Slide them all the way back. Reach up underneath. You can hold the tab. Find his rear axle. He only has one and push it on. The upgrade's complete. Now take it over to a powered set and see how it works. So we're going to test them and see how it works.
works better when you reverse the right truck, the right controller. logs back. We'll try it again. I would say he works. <laughs>